I don't take meds, so. Um, I grew up upstate New York. I'm the oldest of five from 16 to 40. Uh, two little sisters, three brothers. Family doesn't really communicate much anymore. I grew up rough. I didn't have no father. I have s all my siblings had different fathers. I was molested when I was really young, three or four different times from periods of probably three years old until I was 11. Um, I was beat as a child. I, I lived a really rough, rough childhood. Went to 14 different schools before I was in ninth grade. I quit school when I was 14, 15. I don't really remember. Went to jail when I was 13 for DFY, Division for Youth, when I was 13. Caught my first case for selling drugs when I was 13. I was on the highway to hell. That was my story. Um, I found God when I was 19. I thought, and I uh, ended up meeting a girl there, and we, um, one thing led to another. She was a Christian girl, grew up Christian in a mega church, and uh, I found out it really wasn't such a great church. We ended up having sex, she got pregnant, and things happened. I have a 19-year-old son that I don't see because of this, and it turned me off of God, turned me all off of church. It wasn't the love I thought it was. And that, that's a sad thing in this day and age, how that happens. And I went right back down the rabbit hole and I ended up starting selling drugs, turned back into an alcoholic, and I ended up doing a five-year bid and down here in Pennsylvania, I moved to PA. I ended up doing a five-year bid in uh, SCI Somerset. And I came home from prison and I thought I had everything under control. I thought I was good. I ended up meeting John and giving my life back to God and like everything was going really good and I met a girl and the girl seemed to be my downfall. Before I knew it, I was doing heroin and became a heroin addict and uh, got in a bunch of trouble in and out of the county, in and out of rehabs, things of that nature. And then um, the girl I was with ended up going to jail. And uh, while she was in jail, I met the woman I'm with now, Kara, the wife of my two twins, they're 10 years old. And while she was pregnant with my children, the other female came home from jail and I ended up leaving Kara and being with this woman because I thought I was in love with her and not Kara. And Kara was pregnant with my kids at the time. And within three weeks, I was back with a needle in my arm off to the races. I probably died twice during that period from ODing. When my kids were born, I had a needle in my arm at the time. Um, it was bad, really bad. My wife, she, she wasn't my wife at the time, but her and my girlfriend came and bailed us out of jail, bailed me out of jail together. Like, who does that while she's pregnant with my child? Children. So, when that happened, I went to Jersey and off to the races. I was gone for a while and then I ended up telling, telling Kimberly that I didn't want to do this no more, and I ended up, she went back to her PO because she was on the run and she went to jail. And Kara told me, the wife, the mother of my children told me if I needed a place to go and get clean, I could. I could go to her house and get clean, and I did. I got clean. And I was clean for quite a while and living a good life, working, doing roofing. And uh, I fell off a roof. I broke my hip, my pelvis, and three of my ribs dislocated my shoulder. When I went in the hospital, they gave me a button. It's a little morphine button. And I'm a narcotics addict, heroin addict. And that little button says every 20 seconds I can get high. Bing, bing, bing. Right then again, I was right back. Went home, they gave me Oxycontins and little needles for blood clots. Well, I'm an addict. These needles are supposed to be throwaways, but I learned how to reuse them. And then for about five years, I was getting high on and off and hiding it from my family, in and out of jail, in and out of rehab, um, work release, just trouble, lots of trouble. And I'm on probation, it's five years now. I'm, my kids are five years old, I'm being a, a jerk. I'm being a real piece of crap to my family. I'm using my kids' urine while they're sleeping, I wake them up to pee in a cup so I can take it to my PO. Who does that? Who does that? I felt worthless. I wanted to die. I would sit there and look at my kids and cry because I knew 
what I was doing was wrong and it wasn't the life I wanted to live. But I couldn't get past this demon that was on my back, this monkey that says every day and you need it. And then one day uh, I was at work, my PO came and showed up and wanted me to give him a piss test. <laughs> I didn't have no urine to give him. I raced around, my buddy gave me some urine, I put it in a condom, had it in my pants, I went to go pee in the cup for him and it went all over my PO's leg. He got mad and left the restaurant I was working at and uh, I didn't think really nothing of it until I got a phone call at two o'clock after the lunch rush. He said, hey, come outside. Go outside, I'll to jail, he took me. He found some needles in my book bag, an empty bag of dope, I got charged with that. I violated probation, I was going to court for a DUI at the time. Um, I don't know, and then while I was in jail, the wife told me, she wasn't my wife at the time, Kara told me that uh, I could never come back. My kids are five years old and I can't come back, I can't see them. I already lost one son I don't get to see, I wasn't gonna do it again. So while I'm in the county, I start reading things in the Bible, like Proverbs 16.3, commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed. And then Psalms 37.4, delight in yourself, the Lord, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. That one hit me when I read that in the county. Follow me and I will give you the desires of your heart. Keridans, talk to me. I couldn't get no letters, nothing. I spent about 45 days in the county. And then from the county, they sent me to work release. And they sent me, and while I was in work release, I had this dream. And it was a dream of my best friend, John Leader, God rest his soul. He came and picked me up from work release and handed me a bag of dope and a needle. And I had no water in it. This is, I wasn't in work release, this is a dream. It, it, it's a dream from God. It was nothing else but from God, because it's so vivid. And uh, he handed me the bag. I didn't have nothing to do with it or how to use it or anything. So I just dumped it out in my hand, drew some water, put some water in it, drew it up, looked at it, went to put it in my arm. And this voice hit me and it said, Cody, you don't need this anymore. This isn't for you. And I took that needle away and I handed it back to John. I said, I don't need this. And I woke up that morning crying and shivering and shaking. And like, I knew that day I never had to do heroin again. I never had to put another drug in my body again. And I knew that. But then I had to move forward from that and work on myself and do things for me and be very selfish and become the man I am today. And uh, through that, from work release, I went to rehab. And, um, I'm sorry, while I was in jail, I met this kid named Ian Anderson. And I took him kind of under my wing because he was younger than me. And I just started showing him the Bible and stuff. And next thing I know, I get a letter from his dad with a money order in it for commissary. And like, that's a big thing in jail to get some commissary. Like, <laughs> especially when you don't have nobody sending you anything. I wore the same pair of boxer shorts for three weeks because nobody sent me nothing. My own fault. I'm not asking, for, that's not a pity party. It's my own fault. but. That's what happened. So like when that happened, I was like blessed. And then after uh, work release, I was only there for a week. My PO had sent me to rehab. And I'm still going to court for my violation of probation, my DUI, the, the other violation of probation. And I'm on a special IP probation, meaning they can bring back up all my charges and send me back upstate. So I'm just still, I'm in rehab and Michael Anderson was coming and visiting me every other weekend and sending me letters and just keeping me on track with God. And I was just staying in there and staying in there and staying in God. And like, when I went to the rehab, Kara started talking to me again, like just conversations and just talking to me. And uh, while I was in rehab, I had, they would have visits on Sundays and I would go out in the yard and wait for my wife to come visit me with my kids because she wouldn't. And I would see everybody else standing out there with their kids and their wife and their family. And like, I'd have to leave and I'd go in my room and just scream and holler at God. Like, why am I, why do I have to suffer through this? Why do I have to suffer through this? And I would just beat my pillow. And one day God said to me on that, one of them Sundays, he said, Cody, you have to see this before I let you go because you can't ever let this happen again. And that stuck with me. Like, and that's, 
God said them things to me. I, there's not a doubt in my mind he said these things. And then after rehab, during rehab, I went to a place called Daystar. Daystar is a uh, spiritual recovery in Harrisburg, right in the hood, like on 19th Street, in the hood, on the hill, Allison Hill. So, like, I was kind of scared at first, but then when I went there, I was like, Cody, you got this. God said, you got this. Be the man you're supposed to be. And through there, one of, the, one of the counselors said, Cody, what do you got to change about yourself? And I started naming off all these stupid things that doesn't really even matter. And he said, no, you only got to change one thing. I said, what do you mean? And he said, everything. And that hit, like, that hit me. Like, really? I got to change everything. All right, reverse, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then another thing that happened in rehab while I was there is, like, I listened to all the steps. I've been in numerous rehabs. I know all the steps. I, all of it I thought was bullshit. Sorry, garbage. And I read that third step, and then the third step prayer is, God, take my will in my life, guide me in recovery, and teach me how to live. And I said, that's the best step out of them all, because once you do that, everything else follows. It's pieces of puzzle that just get put together. And you don't have to do anything but give them your life. So I decided that's what I'm gonna do. It's just, that's what I need to do and that's what I have to do. So I left the rehab and went to the Daystar, doing the Daystar stuff. And I was supposed to do, I think almost six months there. I only, knew, I only ended up doing what, 90 days? It's like 90 days. And uh, Christmas time came around and uh, my wife lost her job. She, my, the mother of my children lost her job. And like we were talking, I was coming home on Thanksgiving and like I cooked a Thanksgiving dinner for the family and stuff and whatnot. So we were trying to put back the relationship that I broke. And um, when she lost her job, I said, Karen, I think this is God saying for you to stay home, for me to work, for me to come home. And she said, okay, we're gonna do this again. And it took a lot for her to let me back in the house, but I came home. Got a job at MI three weeks later, hated it. MI is a window factory. I'm not a guy that likes to stand in one place and do anything. I want to move, run around, jump. I'm very active. I don't like to sit. I like different things every day. So for four years, I worked at MI. And uh, the last year, the last year, the fourth year, I started climbing trees. And um, God gave me the skill that most people can't do that most people are scared to do. And I love it. And I've never been closer to God in my life than when I'm in the canopy of a tree, 140 feet in the air, 110 feet in the air, 70 feet in the air. I've just never been closer to God in my life. And um, for a year, I, God said, just start this tree business. So I started it off as a hobby. Me and my wife argued a lot, a lot about it because I didn't have a day off for probably for like eight months to a year. I work seven days a week after work on the weekends to build something that I didn't even know I was building. It was all God's plan, all his plan. And um, on May 22nd of what, last year? Last year, I quit my job at MI after four years and took a step of a leap of faith that he's gonna provide for my family and he's gonna run this tree business. And in the past year and a half that this business is, this is my second season, I have grown tremendously. God has blessed me with, I got married. <laughs> um, he blessed me with a great partner, Zach Hoover. Like, I don't know where I'd be without him today because he is, I just don't know where I'd be. I just, it's, he's helped the business so much. And I can't do nothing but give it to God and just let him move me. I, I had nothing five years ago. I was living, I didn't have anything. I lived in a box in a rehab with my clothes. And now I own three vehicles. I run a lucrative business. God has just moved in my family so much. It's crazy. Like he can just do things that he's done. Um, I don't know, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, don't give up on anything you guys are doing. I come from the lowest of lows. There's many people that have lows that's lower than mine, but I come from the lowest of lows and hard work, dedication, and giving it all to God, he's gonna take you places that you never, ever dreamed of. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, 
declares the Lord. I plan welfare, not for evil, but to give you future and hope. That's deep. Hey, them are his plans. He's got everything mapped out for you. You just got to let him move it for you. He's moved mountains in my life. I don't have a license and I own three cars. I, I run a business that provides for my family and I have no worries. I provide for another family and have no worries. And that's, God's done all of that because 10 years ago, I was a thug that didn't care about nothing. I didn't care about nobody. All I cared about was making money, doing drugs and getting high and, and partying. To where today is completely the opposite. And God did that, not me. God does it all. It's a struggle. I struggle every day. Every day I struggle with me, who I'm, what I'm doing. I struggle with sex. I struggle with porn. I struggle with smoking cigarettes. I'm still a human, but I give it to God and he works it, works through me and these things slowly will become obsolete and I won't they won't be a part of my life no more. So, um, I guess that's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. I hope I said something that can open up somebody else's ears and thoughts. If there's any questions, I'm open to questions too. I don't have a question, but I do have a statement. Thank you for sharing. That Honestly, there were a couple times I noticed you starting to tear up and that it takes a lot to continue talking through that. I know I'm, you know, I struggle with mental illness, so I know what it's like to to feel down and I sometimes can't even talk but you kept going and that is amazing thank you yeah thank you very much yes Father it's been a blessing to know you for so many years and I've seen I've seen you in your lowest and I've seen you now the incredible work that God has done in your life I'm just so blessed to have known you and to know you and your family 